Marvel Snap has just launched in Australia and is already dominating the free time of everyone in the ABC Gamer offices. So we've decided to justify playing Snap at work by sharing with you our four best decks. Marvel Snap currently has three different card pools, meaning you'll need to get your collection level up in order to start unlocking certain cards we mentioned. In this video, we'll only use cards from pools one and two, so you can start building winning decks sooner. Number four, on reveal deck. Our first deck features cards from Pool 1, so we're assuming you've played enough to reach at least collection level 18. This deck leans heavily on the titular On Reveal mechanic, which lets you react quickly to locations and your opponent. Rocket Raccoon powers up if you correctly guess where your opponent is going to play, while Ironheart randomly buffs three of your cards in the mid-game. When our location is nearly full, you can throw down a Wolfsbane for an extra 2 power per card. Late game, you're going to want to queue up a White Tiger, who adds a 7 power Tiger to another location. Then on turn 6, drop the Allfather himself, Odin, who reactivates all the on reveal abilities at the location he lands. And while it might be tempting to quickly fill every location with low cost cards, this deck truly shines when you get the perfect combination of on reveal cards for a turn 6 win. Number 3, Movement Deck. One of the coolest things about Marvel Snap is the three randomized locations that you need to adapt to each match. And with a whole battlefield to utilize, it'd be crazy not to slide around. To win town, we're getting a little advanced now with cards from both Pool 1 and Pool 2. The heroes of the movement deck are Iron Fist, Vulture, Multiple Man, and the Bifrost Beast himself, Heimdall. Busting out Iron Fist on round one lets you move Multiple Man on round two, activating his ability and doubling him. You can then use Doctor Strange to make that three, or put Kraven on the far left location to get buffed by everything that comes his way. The key to this deck is leaving space for Heimdall to slide your entire board to the left on turn six, so that you can move Vulture and Multiple Man enough to activate their abilities. The biggest threats to this deck are not drawing Heimdall and revealing locations that autofill with raptors or squirrels, as they'll congest your board and make it harder to slide things about. But if everything goes to plan, you can sneak in a turn 4 snap, then stun your opponent by moving your entire play area on the last turn. Gotta be slippery if you want that snappery. Number 2. Zoo Deck even though there's a ton of insane 6 cost cards, waiting till turn 6 to trigger a combo can open you up to all sorts of risks. Enter the Zoo Deck, a concept found in games like Magic the Gathering and Hearthstone. Zoo Decks focus on overwhelming locations with low cost cards, all of which are buffed by late game effects. The stars of this deck are Okoye, Sunspot and Kazar, all of whom offer crucial options for victory. Getting Okoye down early gives every card in your deck plus one power for the rest of the game while Kazar makes every one cost card on the field stronger in the late game. With the prevalence of Electra in a lot of decks, playing Sunspot early can be risky, as she can destroy a one cost character on reveal. With this in mind, it's best to bait a one cost kill with Hawkeye before revealing Sunspot. The number one threat to this type of deck is Killmonger, who can definitely wipe most of your board in the later rounds. Because of this, Strong Guy and Bishop can help with some late game retaliation, though to be honest, it's sometimes better to just retreat. If you want to play three cards every time your opponent plays one, you can't go wrong with a zoo deck. Number one, combo deck. The last deck is one we discovered only recently, but instantly fell in love with. There are several combos at work here, giving you options on how to pivot if your opponent catches onto any of your plans. Sentinels add a copy to your hand on reveal, which keeps the collector well fed, while Moon Girl doubles your hand size, ensuring Devil Dinosaur can solo a secondary location. To minimize late game threats, Cable and Mantis do a great job stealing from your opponent's deck and keeping your hand full. The Nova plus Carnage combo was rampant when the game initially launched, as Nova buffed every other card on the board while freeing up space for more heavy hitters late game. As a result, there are plenty of traumatized players out there prepared to shut it down with armor as soon as they see it. These combos are ruthless, and having them in the same deck is just cruel. But if you want to reach infinite rank, you got to be relentless and those are the top four decks we've had the most success with. One thing to note is that the Marvel Snap meta is constantly changing, so at any point a patch could change any number of cards and completely alter the way a deck plays. The decks I've offered, however, make use of specific playstyles that are built into the game, meaning you'll be able to tinker with the core idea no matter how much they nerf in the future. But what do you think? Am I neglecting any killer cards? Let me know what your most successful decks are in the comments and subscribe to ABC Gamer for more fun gaming content.